Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. I remember the bear who raised me, nuzzling my face into her warm belly, huge furry limbs shielding me from the biting snow. I remember the deep rumble of her snores through the silent winter and the cloud of steamy breath smelling of berries and pine nuts. My foster mother, Mamochka, says I was about two years old when she found me outside the bear cave. She says I was standing in the snow with no clothes on, but with warm pink cheeks and the biggest smile. I walked right up to her, lifted my arms into the air and made a soft barking sound. Mamochka picked me up and I laid my head on her shoulder, wrapped my legs around her waist and fell straight to sleep. Mamochka says she knew right there and then we were meant to be together. But if I don't know where I came from, how can I be sure where I belong? Mamochka looked in the cave for clues about who I was or who my parents might be. But an old female bear was hiding here, she replied. Not wanting to disturb her, Mamochka crept away and carried me into her home at the edge of a snow forest. I love living with Mamochka. She's the best mother I could have wished for. I often wonder about the bear. I wonder if she remembers me. Maybe even misses me. I wonder about the bear almost as much as I wonder about my real parents, the ones who must have lost me or left me in the forest. One day I'd like to find a story of my past. They call me Yankee the Bear, not because of where I was found, only a picture of me like that. They call me Yankee the Bear because I'm so big and strong. I tower above all the other 12 year olds and most of the grown ups too. And I'm stronger than everyone, even the ice cutters and the wood choppers and the few hunter gatherers who are brave enough to dip into the snow forest. About 100 people live here in the village on the southern edge of the forest, and right now they're all squashed into the square preparing for a festival tomorrow. Snow sparkles and excitement fizzes in the air. For over six months, the village has been trapped by the fierce cold of winter, but tomorrow marks the start of a big melt. The great frozen river will fall, and the snow forest will lose its blanket of white. I'll be able to wander beneath the newly green trees. I won't wander far, the much could worry if I do. But just the thought of standing beneath swaying willows and chattering pines makes my cheeks tingle with happiness. People call for my help as I cross the square. I stop to hold the wooden beams for the carpenters assembling the stage. I help drive poles into the frozen earth for the climbing rock and I haul creaking sledges up from the frozen river, loaded with blocks of ice for the ice fall. The fort is already as tall as the village hall, but children still clamber over its shining walls, building even higher. Finally, I reach the centre of the square, where my best friend Sasha is chopping wood for the festival bonfire. Hey Sasha, I smile and wave. Hey Yanka, Sasha smiles back from beneath his huge furry hat. We've been best friends since I pulled him out of a nettle patch when I was three when he was five. I rubbed his stings with dock leaves and asked him to climb a tree with me. The Mochka says that was the first time I ever spoke. Sasha is as long and leggy as a heron. Until this winter, we stood eye to eye. But after my latest growth spurt, I see right over the top of its head. I never imagined I'd grow this big, and I'm not sure I'll ever get used to it. Shall we carry this one together? Sasha lifts one at the end of a long cut tree. I can manage it. I swing the log up to my shoulder and my feet sink deep into the snow. Sasha picks up another, smaller log and we clump side by side into the bonfire stack. I lower the log onto the bonfire and smile. I don't mind my strength being compared to bears. Not really, but it does remind me of how different I am and not only my size and strength. Everyone else in the village was born here, and so were their parents and grandparents. They wear fur coats passed down from great-grandfathers and sleep under blankets knitted by great-grandmothers. But I don't know where I was born, or who my real parents are, I ended up in the bear cave. And not knowing feels like a hole inside me that gets a little wider every year.